Welcome back to the RAS ACS and Behind the Knife journal cast on landmark papers and surgery. My name is Hassan Mashbury, a clinical fellow in trauma, acute care surgery, and surgical critical care at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School, and a teacher assistant in the Department of Surgery in Jazzine University in Saudi Arabia. I will be briefly reviewing a landmark paper about penetrating esophageal injuries, multicenter study of the American Association for the Surgery of Trauma. Penetrating esophageal injuries represent an unusual entity even in busy urban trauma centers. It is estimated that at most, these centers admit an average of five patients yearly. Several series average two to nine patients treated per year. The outcomes of penetrating esophageal injuries is dependent on multiple factors. Delay in implementing diagnostic investigation to establish their presence and the difficulty in identifying these injuries, especially when other association potentially life-threatening injuries are present. Time to treatment has not been widely evaluated as a contributor to outcomes, and these were the motivations to create this study. Regarding the study design, it's a retrospective multi-center study among 34 trauma centers in USA over a period of 10 and a half year, from June 17, 1988 through December 26, 1998. For the inclusion criteria, they included the cases with confirmed presence of penetrating esophageal injuries from gunshot wounds, stab wounds, shotgun wounds, and other causes. Cervical, thoracic, and intra-abdominal esophageal injuries were included in patients of all ages, and all study patients were required to have a measurable vital signs at the time of admission. They excluded later patients with pre-existing esophageal disease or those with evidence of pre-injury, immunosuppression, and or immunocompromised patient. For example, those on steroids or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Total of 405 patients were included in this study. 24, which represents 6% of patients died in the ED from various causes and 35, which represent 8.6% of patients died in the OR and both were excluded. Surviving patients were stratified into two groups, patients with preoperative evaluations, titled preoperative evaluation group, and those patients not subjected to any investigative procedures preoperatively and transported directly to the operating room, those group called no preoperative evaluation group. Regarding the results, this is a table comparing the preoperative evaluation group versus the no preoperative evaluation groups. There were no difference in age, systolic blood pressure or heart rate, respiratory rate, and injury severity score between the two groups. The main difference between these two groups was the time interval elapsed from admission to reaching the operating room, 13 hours for the preoperative evaluation versus one hour for the no preoperative evaluation group. This is, was highly significant. This is another table comparing the preoperative evaluation group versus the no preoperative evaluation groups according to two major variables, the mechanism of injury and the anatomical location of the injury. Regarding the mechanism of injury, the majority was due to gunshot wounds. And regarding the anatomical location of the injury, the majority were in the cervical region. This is another table comparing the esophageal related complications, preoperative evaluation versus no preoperative evaluation group. Each group represents in a total number and a percentage. Regarding the total number of complications, there were 74, which represent 41% of patients that experienced esophageal related complications in the preoperative evaluation group versus 32, which represent 19% of patients in the no preoperative evaluation group, which is statistically significant. Regarding the total number of complications, there were 74, which represent 41% that experienced esophageal related complications, the preoperative versus 32, which represent 19% of patients in the no preoperative evaluation group, in which represent, again, a statistical significant. When comparing both surgical ICU length of stay and hospital length of stay, 
there were statistical significance between the groups. The mean surgical ICU length of stay for the preoperative evaluation group was 11 versus seven days for the no preoperative evaluation groups. And similarly, the mean hospital length of stay for the preoperative evaluation group was much longer, 22 versus 11 days for the no preoperative evaluation group. In conclusion, delay of operative intervention was found to be associated with worse outcomes, including the following, increased morbidity, longer, IC, longer ICU length of stay, longer hospital length of stay, and worse esophageal-related complications. Please note that the authors do not recommend that immediate operative be performed on every patient. The authors conclude that whatever method is chosen to evaluate the patients, whether it be with preoperative study or fairly immediate operative intervention, we need to be more expeditious about that. I think that one could argue that 13 hours isn't terribly expeditious. Again, my name is Hassan Mashbury, a clinical fellow in trauma, acute care surgery, and surgical critical care at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School, and a teacher assistant in the Department of Surgery, Jazza University in Saudi Arabia. If you have any questions or comment, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at, at Hassan Mashbari. Don't forget, please, to review this content with the current This Week in Score modules, Upper Aero Digestive Tract Injury. Thank you for listening.